Good day there guys, Marky here, and welcome back to another episode of r slash relationship advice. I do hope you enjoy today's stories, and with that said, I want you to sit back, relax, chuck a prawn to the barbie, let's get right into it. Posted by user throwradzc, titled, My brother's 27 male, girlfriend 26 female, has an altar of my child. I'm 34 male, wife is 32 female, brother is 27 male, and brother's girlfriend is 26 female. I'm looking for advice here because this is completely over my head, and my initial reaction to this is probably way off. My brother has been dating his girlfriend for about a year now. She's a nice girl, but at times her behavior is odd and erratic. She's asked over and over again to babysit for my kids, girl and boy, three and five. My wife and I have always said no. This weekend, we had a barbecue, and she was acting extremely strangely, only speaking in a baby voice, not talking to any of the adults, running around with the kids. My wife pulled me aside at one point, extremely upset. She had found her in our three-year-old's room, in her playpen and ball pit area, sucking her thumb, covered in our daughter's blankets, with all of her stuffed animals. My wife was completely confused as to what was going on, and when she asked my brother's girlfriend what she was doing, she responded in a baby voice that she was tired and needed nappies. My wife came immediately to get me, and we both confronted my brother to ask him what the hell was going on. My brother got extremely embarrassed. He said that his girlfriend has disassociative identity disorder, and one of her alters is a three-year-old girl. My wife and I don't know anything about this disorder, so we didn't really say anything, just told him to please go get her and to keep her out of our kid's room. He went to go get her, but within 15 minutes he still wasn't out. I went to go see what was going on, and his girlfriend was extremely upset, insisting that he calls her Avalyn, our daughter's name. That was the last straw for my wife. She told her to leave, brother's girlfriend started straight up sobbing, using her baby voice, saying she's confused and doesn't understand why everyone is being mean to her and calling her the wrong name. That night, my brother called and admitted not only is one of her alters a three-year-old, it is very specifically our three-year-old. He said he can't talk to her about this because when she's not her Avalyn alter, she doesn't remember anything, and when she is her Avalyn alter, she isn't rational. My wife and I told my brother she is not allowed at family functions anymore, and she's not allowed around our kids. My wife was extremely upset and told my brother that his girlfriend was psychotic and that she doesn't understand why he was still with someone like that. My brother is upset that my wife said those things about her and said he understands we would be upset about her having an altar of our daughter, but she can't help it, and we should be more understanding because it's a disorder due to childhood trauma. Did my wife and I handle this the right way? We know nothing about this disorder, and doing research into it, the medical definition doesn't seem to match the way that my brother's girlfriend is acting. She doesn't have an official diagnosis, putting that in bold because people keep asking. Apparently it was rude of my wife and I to ask if she was getting treatment or had a diagnosis because therapy isn't available to everyone and self-diagnosis is valid. She comes from a very affluent family and definitely has the resources to get therapy and a proper diagnosis. In the comments, MJ8 says, I've got some really serious concerns about your brother. I'm not an expert on DID, so I'm not going to offer opinions on that, but your brother knew about her fixation on your child and brought her around that child without telling you anything. He's also in a relationship with someone who, at least some of the time, believes she is his three-year-old niece. He didn't give you the chance to decide if this is someone safe for your child. This should be higher up. Everyone is fixating on the girlfriend, but ignoring the betrayal of a brother who would have let her babysit your kids without blinking. He is dangerous too. That concerned me too. My first assumption was that he is one of those guys who can't stay away from a volatile chick because the sex, I would presume, is just spectacular. But the darker suspicion would be that there is something about this childlike behavior that appeals to him specifically wouldn't be the first couple who let their DD slash LG type relationship bleed into their everyday life with the excuse of age regression and dissociation. It's possible that he's innocent in his intentions towards her behavior and that it's just a fault in her that he's overlooking for whatever reason, but he's certainly not innocent with regards to his brother's kids. 
Some serious BS is occurring here regardless of who specifically it's coming from and why. I know DID is debated among professionals about whether it's a legit thing, but from the people I've seen who claim to have it, their alters are their own identities. It has never ever been with someone else's who actually exists. This is a bit that throws me off further. She claims to have a three-year-old as an alter? Sure, whatever, but saying that she's your daughter? This is way more concerning. Don't let her back until she sought professional help. I would ban her from my house. You don't need a reason to decide who is allowed around your children, and this woman has given enough reasons anyway. Trying multiple times to babysit little kids while behaving like a little kid, allegedly due to a mental illness that she didn't disclose, that's really messed up. If she really is suffering from dissociative identity disorder, she is not handling it appropriately. And you can tell your brother it's not because you despise her, but because you don't feel your kids are being safe around her. Yeah, and if this was me in this situation, I would go no contact with him if he didn't break up with her. That's a very serious danger to have in your child's life. There's a reason they say don't stick your dick in crazy, because... Look, it's put your brother's children at risk and you've been enabling it too. Opie's brother is possibly enabling child abuse to occur and he doesn't seem to have a problem with it at all because, you know, he would have squashed this before it ever became a problem or if he saw that things were crossing the line if he were a normal person, he would have mentioned it to OP and the family and been like, hey, gonna keep her away, she's a bit too weird for you guys. I know I got weird taste, and there are boundaries that we don't cross in life. Christ, like, I'm surprised you didn't call the cops on her, because I <laughs> would be seriously threatening to do that. At the point that she's messing around in the child's room, I'm gonna consider that trespassing, like, get the hell out of my house. Update. So, to start things off, my wife and I have done a lot of research into dissociative identity disorder. Right off the bat, I'll be blunt here. I don't believe in the fad DID or anything that goes along with it. I don't think people are programmed to be systems. I don't think people make fictives over characters from TV or movies. I definitely don't think it's possible to make an alter of a specific three-year-old girl. I think that's all attention-seeking BS. I don't know about the validity of actual DID, if it does exist, because at this point it is being faked so much, it's impossible to figure out if it's an actual disorder or not. Side note, how insane was Trisha Paytas' DID arc? How have we just forgotten that one? I definitely don't think if someone did actually have DID, they would be on Reddit casually talking and making videos about meeting the altars and BS like that. <laughs> just like Trisha Paytas did! And no, I don't think being in the DSM proves any validity whatsoever. I do think if you are really convinced you have DID, you probably do have some sort of disorder that you should get checked out with an actual reputable doctor. Now that's out of the way, my wife and I have heard from my brother after the party. He still thinks that we owe his girlfriend an apology. We told him that he owes us an apology for not telling us about the girlfriend's erratic and psychotic behavior. I'm not the one using term psychotic to be insulting, I really do think she's experiencing some sort of psychosis. My wife told him that due to his extraordinary lack of judgement in bringing her around our family and our kids, when he knew about this, we didn't really feel comfortable having him around our children without one of us directly there either. We encouraged him to get her to see an actual doctor and get checked out. We told him we'd be willing to help her look for doctors in the area if she needed support and didn't want to involve her family in this for whatever reason. But we also told him under no circumstances will she be allowed around our children ever again unless she goes through intensive therapy, realize what she did was wrong, and apologizes for it. Thanks to everyone for pushing us in the right direction as to what to do. We really appreciated all of your inputs and comments. To clarify, I'm not saying DID isn't real. I don't know. I think you all know what DID fad I'm talking about. I don't believe in the social media DID, the meet the alters, and watch me switch BS. And yes, she does have a TikTok account where she does pretend to be my daughter. Just like that recent iconic line from a Jada Smith is the paparazzi are annoying her. She's like, 
we're suing. <laughs> That's what you need to do here, OP. Jesus. In the comments, Curious Tsukihime says, Protect your children. This is disturbing behavior, and the fact he tried to hide and then excuse her issues when they directly impact your home is such a breach of trust. I'm proud of you and your wife securing your border. If no one else has said it, cameras, cameras, cameras near the egress and ingress points of your home. He hid it and didn't bother to mention it when his girlfriend kept begging to babysit the children over and over. She had developed an unhealthy fixation on the three-year-old, was trying to get her under her care unattended, and he still said nothing and continued to bring her around until it was impossible for him to hide it from them. Honestly, who knows what might have happened if this woman had gotten a hold of the daughter and the brother wouldn't have done a darn thing to stop it. OP replies, Thank you. We already have cameras installed, but we're looking into getting two more near the entrance of our driveway and at the edge of our property in the backyard. I'd let daycare, preschool, slash any childcare person know as well. She could show up and try to claim that she's the nanny. Truly, OP, you can't be too safe with this type of situation, and I say that as a school nurse. I totally agree. OP and his wife need to lock down access to their children from school, grandparents, and also things like the doctor's office. You are 100% correct. She is faking this. Either she has a mental illness, other than DID, or most likely, she's faking for attention or because it's the latest fad. Probably spends way too much time on TikTok. Your brother is enabling this. What's worse is he is in a romantic and sexual relationship with a woman who pretends to be his three-year-old niece. His three-year-old niece. He sees his girlfriend pretending to be his baby niece and is okay with screwing her. Even if he doesn't do it while she's faking, he's still seen her acting as this little girl and continues to have sex with her. If he doesn't see that as a problem, that's a massive red flag in itself. Honestly, keep your kids away from her, and possibly him too, while he's with her. Remember last year the girl who found out her parents' kink was the mum pretending to be her? <laughs> oh no no no. Sorry, what? Yeah! Apparently the parents' kink was the mum dressing up in the daughter's clothes for the dad, and they'd have sex pretending the mum was the daughter, and from what I remember, she cut contact and moved away. Holy shit! That poor girl. What the hell is going on in that house? I wonder if the dad has pedo tendencies, and this was a way for the mum to keep him from exploring. Even if this were the case, the complicit behaviour is subtly terrifying. <laughs> What's wrong with people? Thanks, but no thanks. I'm gonna scrub my brain now. <laughs> I wonder if there was a certain couch involved in that story. <laughs> Who knows? Final update. Things escalated with my brother's girlfriend, who has an altar of my child. This is probably going to be my last update, because we have since cut off all contact with her, and my brother, and are in contact with the police. She refused to get inpatient psychiatric help willingly, but her family put her under a 5150. Long story short, she approached our child while she was at the park with the nanny, Luckily, the nanny knows about the situation and removed our daughter immediately, contacted the police, and then contacted us. She tried to tell the nanny that we had told her to pick up our daughter and take her to her grandmother's house. She waited until it was close to the end of our nanny's shift to make it more believable. Luckily, the nanny didn't engage with her. She just picked up our daughter and walked away, recording the entire incident to have proof. She ran after the nanny, telling our daughter, Go ahead, Evelyn. Tell her you know me. We're gonna go to grandma's. Her family told us that there has never been any abuse in the family. She's never claimed to them that she has DID, though they have long suspected she has histronic personality disorder. My brother has not contacted us since this happened, but my wife doesn't want contact with him anyway, and I agree with her. Again, thank you for all the advice and well wishes. Though she's never allowed around my family again, I'm incredibly happy that she's getting the help she needs and hope her recovery and treatment go well for her, and I wish her the best. In the comments, Styrax Carillon says, 
The girlfriend has a TikTok account where she pretends she's the three-year-old, even though she claims to have no memory of being the three-year-old. That means the three-year-old Alta is just supposedly setting up the camera and shooting the TikTok video, and her adult self just happens to find the videos and upload them? Or is the toddler also uploading them? Nothing sketchy about that scenario. <laughs> Sarcasm. Conveniently, everybody who believes in this particular manifestation of DID and wishes it was the whole split personality bullshit from TV shows of yore are stupid enough that glaring plot holes and missing details like this don't appear to bother them whatsoever. Invective Detective says, I'm less interested in debating whether DID is real, and far more interested in understanding why, after the brother realized his girlfriend was fixating on his niece, he did F all to protect that little girl. That's why OP and his wife are angry. He knew her condition, but he still let her around the kids. Nothing screws like crazy. Also, ew. How could he sleep with someone that's claiming one of her identities is his niece? I don't know. I don't want to know. I don't want any more answers to this one. I'm just glad the police were called and that OP and their partner did something about this because, dear lord, there's just too many levels of depravity for me. Our next post is by user FriendlyFox4575, titled, My husband deserted me without a word. I'm still reeling from this and just need to vent. My, 48 female, husband, 50 male, and I have been homeless for about a year after he was fired from his job but staying in motels. I do work online and have been able to keep a roof over our heads. He hasn't worked in a year. So on Tuesday, when he said that he had a job interview, I was excited. He walked since the truck broke down and was sold. He said he needed both phones for numbers, so I gave it to him not thinking anything about it, especially since I could still get in touch with him via text now. After about an hour, he texted me and said he got the job and just had to fill out paperwork and get his drug test and would only be a couple of hours. Then I saw three expenses on the bank card in the county over and knew something wasn't right. Those couple hours turned into that night, the next morning. He not only wasn't answering my texts or calls, but he blocked me completely. He had both phones, both bank account cards, and my valid ID. Before I had a chance to cancel the cards because it was my money on there, he had pretty much wiped out the account. I still had a few days left at the motel, so called around. My dog, cat, and I are safe at the moment, and I opened new bank accounts, but have to wait on the cards to arrive. But we can't stay here forever. I'm hoping the card arrives soon, and I can get my ID done so that we can get back into a motel, which is the only option at the moment until I can build up enough money for rent deposit, etc., and find a cheap apartment or house. I do have a paycheck coming Thursday, though I'm not sure what to do after Monday when I can no longer stay where I am. As far as I know, my husband is with another woman. He contacted his brother just long enough to say that he was safe, but wouldn't give an answer why. We've been married for nine years, but started dating back in 1988. We weren't arguing, and I thought everything was fine. Not a word, and I'm just devastated. I just can't fathom why he just left me and our pets like that with no access to money and tried to clean it completely out a vehicle, or even a live phone. He knew that most likely we would be out on the streets, but luckily we did find a temporary haven for a few days. I guess he just found a piece of us he wanted more than someone who supported him and was loyal throughout these bad times. I figured he found another woman with more money or something who could take care of him like I did. Anyway, thank you for letting me vent. In the comments, Free Speech is Dead says... Your future ex is a first-class turd and a thief. I'm sorry this happened to you, OP. I know how hard it is to start over. Do you have some family or friends to help you? OP says, Not really. All of my family are deceased, and the only person I could call is helping me right now, but I can't stay for more than a couple of days. We've had to move so many times because he couldn't keep a job or wanted to try someplace new. I think I became really isolated from everyone. I thought another friend was going to help, but they said that they thought about it and didn't want any drama at their house if he decided to show up, which I can't blame them for. It's pretty much just me, the dog, and the cat. I'm sorry you're going through this, and I hope you take the time to process your anger and sadness. 
Hopefully soon you'll be able to look back and realize he did you a favor by disconnecting his barnacle ass from you. He's heartless, jobless, and a thief, and you will most likely thrive, and down the road be much happier without him. He really doesn't deserve you. OP says, Thank you. I've been thinking a lot the past few days, and have started to think and realize he was using me to support him. I lost one writing job last month, and just started another one this month. I guess he didn't think that I'd be able to support him. He left before he knew that I'm actually going to be making more money than before. I just have to wait until the first pay on Thursday. Wow, I'm so sorry this happened. Thank you for sharing. You will be okay. You've got this. And OP says, Thank you. I'm trying hard to keep the sadness down and try to stay angry so that I can get things done. I can have a breakdown later. Update. First of all, I would like to thank you for everyone's kind words of encouragement and advice. I'm sorry if I wasn't able to respond to everyone. Myself and my pets are still safe. My new bank cards should be coming in today or tomorrow. With my paycheck on Thursday, I get to move into a studio apartment I found. It's small, but bigger than a motel room and has a kitchen. They allow pets and even have a little fenced-in dog play area. I'm still working to beef up my paycheck for the deposits and food. After I get settled in, I do have an appointment with legal aid counseling for the area. So, things are definitely looking up, and I really feel like I've got this and can take care of myself. Where I work has announced that there will be a huge increase in work available and should continue through the next year. And if he even tries to contact me, I'm not buying anything he says, especially if he tries to weasel his way back in. He can talk to my lawyer. In the comments, Guano Barbie says... In the divorce, list the fact that he drained the accounts and request alimony, Lamau. Probably won't go very far, to be honest. Her assets are far greater than his, and she's the one with an income. If anything, I'd avoid asking for anything, because it's much more likely that she will need to pay him out. Still theft on his part, especially if she held on to records of the removal of her money. If women get tagged for it, I'm sure he can too. But I don't even think this is in Canada. I'm so glad you're safe. In addition to changing your bank accounts and your direct deposit, if you haven't already, I would put a freeze on your credit since he has your ID. You don't need him adding identity theft to your list of problems if he tries to open accounts in your name. OP says, That's a good idea. I hadn't thought of that. You might want to add fraud detection with the major credit bureaus. That way he can't buy anything in your name and ruin your credit. Hopefully his family isn't supporting his bad behavior. OP says, The family members I've spoken to have completely cut him off. They said they had hoped that he would grow up, but they find this situation disgusting and they won't give him any help if he comes asking. So glad you're safe and moving forward. Please check in from time to time and let us know that you're still okay. I hope he never finds your new home. Be free of that dead weight. OP says, Thank you. I've lost 10 pounds in the last week, but I feel like I'm even lighter with the additional 220 pounds I lost. Lol. Update 2. I just wanted to give another, and hopefully final, update. I still haven't heard from him, but I don't want to, and the lawyer I speak with on Thursday can take over tracking him down. The Furballs and I are in our new apartment, safe and sound. It took a lot of hard work and every penny that I had from my paycheck, but we made it. I still need to go get furniture, but we have a roof, and that's a great start. We're going to be alright, I know it. And even though I need time to know and love myself again and heal, it was kind of a confidence boost to be flooded with by a couple of the neighbours, lol. Thank you for all the support, love, and kindness through these past couple of weeks. Last Update I thought that last post would be my last update, but I know many people were concerned about me seeing a lawyer, which I did today. The retainer won't be too bad, but it will need to wait until next week for payday. But it's the beginning of the next step. And I did hear from him. I received a short email, which was the only way he knew how to get in touch, which just said, Sorry, how are you? It took a lot out of me to not respond because there is still a lot of hurt and grief that I'm processing, 
but I'm proud to say that I just sent a message back with a number of the law office that I was going to, then created a filter to send future messages to the trash. It hurt, but it felt good at the same time. I truly want to say thank you for all of your kindness and support during this time. I have had several people reach out and message me to share similar experiences, and it breaks my heart to know that this has happened to so many other women and men. Edit, after a few people mentioned it, I did create a folder for any of his messages to filter into so that I can keep and forward them to the lawyer. At the moment, I didn't even think about that. Thanks for the advice. In the comments, I like drawing and stuff says, All of this sucks. Mostly him. I'm sorry that you have to go through this, but in the end, you'll probably be better for it. Sounds like you have everything it takes to get your life back on track and be stable and happy. Him, not so much. Good luck. And OP says, Thank you. It'll take time, but things are slowly starting to fall into place. I'd rethink the filter sending his emails to the trash. He may send something incriminating that your lawyer can use. Have them go to a folder so you don't have to see them, but definitely talk to your lawyer about it. Good luck, and I'm glad that you and the fur babies are doing so much better. And that's where I'm going to end today's episode, guys. I do hope you enjoyed. If you did, let me know what you thought about it in the comments down below, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.